It's time for another RIN TV Rewind, where we look back at some of the highlights from RIN TV over the first 12 months. We were fortunate to have RAA President Frank Nutter host a new series called Reinsurance Today. His first guest was Gen Re Chairman and CEO Tad Montross. It was interesting and informative television. Hello, I'm Frank Nutter and welcome to Reinsurance Today. My guest today is Tad Montross, the Chairman, CEO and President of General Reinsurance Corporation, a Berkshire Hathaway company. Tad, welcome to the show. Thanks, Frank. It's great to be with you. Perhaps the most prominent topic for discussion in the sector today is the introduction of alternative capital. Uh, some believe that it's transformative of our industry, or at least sectors of our industry. Uh, what's your perspective on that? How did I know you were going to ask that question, Frank? That's the only question anyone asks these days. Um, you know, a lot's been written about it. Certainly the big uh, topic over in Monte Carlo and at many of the conventions thus fall this fall. fall. Um, you know, it's, it's, some people would say it's the new normal. I, uh, I've gone on record saying I think it's the old normal that, you know, for the last 25 years, capital has come in and out of this industry, you know, very quickly um, and tre tremendous amounts of it. Uh, the barriers to entry are very low in the industry and, and the industry's learned how to, to, to deal with that. Today, you know, we have the pension funds and the hedge funds, but it's, it's, it's really, you know, part of a, a, a cyclical uh, issue that I think the industry is, 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 is used to. That's why I call it the old normal. The, the concern that's been expressed is that it has transformed or will transform the property catastrophe sector in particular. Uh, do you see the possibility of creep, if you will, into the other aspects of reinsurance and again, moderating the, uh, the value of those sectors or the pricing in those sectors? Well, it certainly has had a, a significant impact on the, on the property cap line of business. Um, it's estimated that, that as much as 20% of the business has, has been written by the capital markets uh, in the past year. And so that's, that's a very large market share that they've pick, picked up in a, a relatively short period of time. As you well know, Property Cat is a short tail line of business. And uh, as such, it, it um, you know, fits in the, in the capital market structure better than a long tail line of business like automobile or, or GL. So it, it's gonna be more difficult, but they're clearly cadres of, of investment bankers and lawyers um, looking at that space. My own view is that the, the mismatch between the time horizon of the investors and the duration of the liabilities is going to make uh, those, those sectors much more difficult for the capital markets to assume. If it's fair to say that General Re is a traditional reinsurer, having been around for decades with uh, much history, how would you characterize the value proposition of a company like General Re or General Re itself relative to uh, so many new forms of capital as well as new entrants in the last 10 to 15 years? Well, you know, traditional sounds, sounds sort of old fashioned and sort of stuck in the mud. Uh, but, but one of the good things about being a legacy player is that we are tried and tested. You know, we have a, a track record of over 90 years. We have been through some very, very large catastrophes, as you know, some very soft markets, and we've shown to be very resilient and to be there to pay our claims. So, you know, that first and foremost, that's, that's the important thing with reinsurance. The second point I'd make is, you know, a lot of this capital that's coming in, I would, I would argue, is, is opportunistic. Um, I mentioned the time, their time horizon as investors a moment ago. Um, I like to think that the traditional markets provide a consistent alternative to some of the opportunistic capital that's in play today. And lastly, um, you know, I think that, that many of the smaller companies and the specialty companies and, and to some extent the startup companies, they're looking for a thought partner. They're, they're looking for a, a partner that can really help with, with the underwriting and, and claims issues that are, that are constantly changing. So I think there's a, a very real proposition for the traditional markets like Generate. Let's talk about current market conditions, uh, if you will. Uh, if you looked at property casually, uh, generally, or if you looked at property distinct from casually, uh, have we reached a floor in the soft market? Have we reached a plateau? Have we reached a turning point? Where do you see us in the cycle? And is the cycle perhaps dissected along different lines? Well, I, I learned a long time ago not to try to predict where the market's going. And I, I don't think it's particularly healthy to sort of opine on, on the renewal in general, because there are just so many subsets and, and, and sub-issues that, that we need to explore. It, you know, the debate always seems to be about where's the market going and how much capital is there. I think the more serious debate uh, is really about what's happened to exposures and what's happening to loss trend, both frequency and severity. And, and, and that really is a client by client, transaction by transaction discussion. 
whether or not we've reached any floor or turning point about rates. Uh, I do hear a lot of conversation about the terms of the reinsurance contracts. Uh, would you comment, if you would, about whether or not you're going to see pressure on the expansion of terms in a soft market, or, or whether or not that's uh, just the market talking at this point without the reality of actual being in the renewal cycle? You know, terms and conditions are always part of um, every negotiation, and uh, they will continue to be. And clearly, uh, when there is um, new, new entrance in the market, and when you've got the consolidation that we've had in the brokerage se segment uh, in, in the past decade, you know, clearly the, the, the debate about what, what, are, what is an appropriate set of terms and conditions um, escalates, and, and we definitely have seen that the last year. One of the other points of conversation in the, in the industry is about consolidation. Uh, certainly there are expectations by investors of certain uh, return on equity. Uh, it would appear that the, the industry generally has lowered its target, if you will, for return on equity. Could you see consolidation happening in the next few years or even in the short term uh, in the sector? You know, I think clearly we will continue to see consolidation in the sector. I think it's less an issue of return expectations uh, than it is top line growth. I think, you know, in a, in a, in a world uh, where the economy has been growing uh, very slowly um, in, in most parts of, of the world, where uh, large um, clients, you know, in, insurance companies are purchasing less reinsurance than they have historically, uh, at least for the moment. Um, clearly, you know, trying to find organic growth is, has been difficult, and, and consolidation becomes a, a, you know, an easy answer to that. Ted, one final question. Uh, if you look forward three to five years, so an intermediate term outlook, where are the growth opportunities either by line or by geography for the reinsurance sector? Sure. Well, you know, I mean, it's easy to get sort of upset in terms of what's happening in the marketplace today. I'm, I'm actually very bullish over the next three to five years. And Frank, as you know, there are a number of studies that have been done on the huge gap between insured losses and economic losses in almost every large catastrophe around the world. Now, we've been in a period that's been quite benign, but that's going to continue. So there's, there's a huge opportunity for the industry to, to really begin to, to try to figure out how to, to, to write some of that business that's, that's just basically in the, the public domain today. Um, you know, the emerging markets are, 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 will continue to be a, a growth prospect for, for insurance. Penetration is going to increase and the need for reinsurance will increase. Um, and then they're gonna, we're going to continue to see startup insurance companies. We're in a period of, of profound technological change. The, uh, what's happening in the, in the world of fracking and, 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 and oil production is, is creating, you know, just a different set of, of issues for the industry. And so all of these uh, cyber is a big issue, obviously. All of these issues really uh, will create demand for, for insurance and reinsurance over the next few years. Uh, Ted, thank you. I'd like to thank my guest, Tad Montross of General Reinsurance Corporation, and to the viewers for joining us on WRIN TV today. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. It's been great to be with you. Throughout December, we are rewinding highlights of popular reports from 2014, all viewable from our on-demand library. We look forward to having Frank Nutter back in the new year to host Reinsurance Today as a regular series right here on RIN TV.